Okay, in this video we are going to kind of geometrically and trigonometrically uh, arrive at the formulas for the sine of x plus y and the cosine of x plus y. We're going to do it using kind of a clever rectangle. Um, this isn't my favorite way to get these, but it definitely works and it's kind of interesting to look at. So let's see what we got. So here is the rectangle and we have one uh, giant red segment there and uh, that red segment has to have a length of one for this whole thing to work out. Now what we're going to do is a little bit of like angle chasing. I'm going to name two of the angles. So I'm going to name this X and uh, well, I'm going to give it measure X and give this angle measure Y. And then, uh, so what can we do? Uh, right off the bat, uh, this angle right here is X plus Y. Also, we have parallel lines cut by a transversal. The red line is the transversal. So up here, that angle is going to be equal to the angle that we marked. So that's also X plus Y. Um, so that's a good start. Then the triangle that has, uh, so there's two triangles, the one that has angle X and hypotenuse one, uh, the third angle there right here is gonna be 90 minus X for sure. And then I can also figure out uh, that top angle uh, here. So I'm gonna do that over here. So they should all add up to 180. So if I subtract x plus y and I subtract 90 minus x from 180, that'll tell me that other angle. And if I do that, I actually end up with 180 minus 90 is 90. And then uh, negative x minus y plus x is just negative y, so 90 minus y. So I know that this angle that I marked up here is 90 minus y. Um, if that's the case, then that triangle uh, kind of on the right hand side there also has an angle of y right there because those two angles need to add up to uh, 90. They have to be complementary. And then uh, there's only one other angle that I might need to know. I might also not need to know it, but uh, we have like this triangle. Actually, I don't really need that, but uh, for some reason I did it. Uh, this other angle here is also 90 minus y. Um, so we actually have two triangles that have the same angles. Uh, which I don't know if that's gonna play into this or not yet, uh, but let's let's keep going. So we got all of our angles down. So now we're gonna start dealing with sides and lengths and segments. So I'm gonna copy over um, some of the stuff that we have. If you're not sure, like a like an angle chasing technique is just sub in numbers because if it if it works with variables, it's gotta work with everything. So if you're not sure about anything we did there, just pick some numbers and kind of like go for it. You'll see that it does work out. Um, all right, let's do this. So I've copied over uh, all the angles that we found. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on that like middle uh, triangle. So I'm gonna copy it over. Uh, so this is our triangle. It has an angle of X, a hypotenuse of one. I'm gonna do some trig on that. So let's name these. I'm gonna call that A and I'm gonna call that B. So in the triangle, I know that the cosine of A, uh, sorry, of X, cosine of angle X, is adjacent, which is A, over hypotenuse, which is one. And I know that the sine of X is opposite, which is B, over one. And so that means I can label those lengths. So A is just the cosine of X, and B is just uh, the sine of X. So A um, is adjacent to X, so in the figure, I'm gonna fill that in. So that's the cosine of X. And then B is opposite of angle X in this triangle. So let me get that out of the way um, and fill that in. So the figure gets kind of like busy as you work on it. So I, I just erased uh, that measure. That measure was 90 minus X just to make room. We're not gonna need it again. Um, so it's not a big loss. All right, let's keep moving. So now we know, uh, if you look at it, we know the hypotenuse of two separate triangles now. Cosine of X is the hypotenuse of one of them. And then uh, sine of X is the hypotenuse of another one. So we're gonna deal with both of those triangles. So first, I'm gonna deal with the like bottom triangle. So let's draw it. It has a hypotenuse of the cosine of X and an angle of Y. And we're gonna do basically the same thing. So we'll call that A and B. Uh, the cosine of angle Y is gonna be adjacent, which is A, over hypotenuse, which is the cosine of X. Which is kind of weird, but like uh, it's definitely equal to that, so we just go with it. So that means I know that A is cosine x, cosine y. 
So usually you organize these alpha, like alphabetically by variable, which is why I said cosine x, cosine y. Um, but I'm not always going to follow that rule because I know what I'm going to end up with, and I want it to kind of look that way. Um, so then uh, let's go back to the triangle and figure out something about b, right? So I'm going to use sine. Sine of y is equal to uh, opposite, which is b, over the hypotenuse, which is cosine of x. So then b is this kind of strange combination. It's cosine of x sine of y. And what I want to do is I want to put these in the figure. So you'll see it's going to get cluttered. Um, so a is adjacent to y, so it's actually the bottom edge of our rectangle. So that's going to be cosine x, cosine y. And then uh, b that we found is the other side of that triangle. So cosine x, sine y. All right, we're going to move to the top right triangle and deal with that. So it has a hypotenuse of sine and there's an angle y and so on. Let's see if we can do this. So copy everything over. Uh, we're gonna look at the top right triangle. It has a hypotenuse of the sine of x. And uh, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna think about the sine of y and the cosine of y. Um, so the sine, let's call those. Okay, sine of y is uh, opposite, which is b over hypotenuse, which is the sine of x. So b is kind of interesting, it's sine x sine y. b is sine x sine y. Okay, and then uh, let's go back and do the cosine of angle y. So cosine of y is adjacent, which is a over hypotenuse sine of x. Okay, so a is gonna be equal to um, sine x cosine y. And now we want to put these on our figure. So uh, A is like the vertical segment. So here it's going to be sine x cosine y. And then B is the horizontal segment that we're dealing with. So right there it's going to be sine x sine y. And we're actually almost done. We've kind of labeled everything that we need at this point, almost. Um, so let's copy this over and basically kind of finish this. Okay, so now we're gonna move into like the final triangle, the one on the left that has an angle of x plus y and a hypotenuse of one. Uh, I'm not even gonna recopy it, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna label like an A and a B here. And think about in terms of the overall rectangle, what are A and B? So uh, A, for example, is that whole bottom segment, which is cosine x, cosine y. So it's this whole bottom segment here minus the little part of the top segment that we do know. So minus sine x sine y. So that's gonna actually be what A is. So that's a side of that triangle. It's like a weird side, but that's what it is. I'm basically making this video because I find this picture very confusing when all I, usually you're just given this filled in figure and it's like, ooh, look, you can get the formulas, but like, where are they coming from? But if you go through it and you fill it in, it's really not that bad. Um, remembering the figure though, I feel like is almost impossible, which is why this is not my favorite way to derive these. Um, but in the figure, if we look, uh, the segment I labeled B is actually the entire vertical uh, edge of our rectangle. So that's gonna be the sum of this and this. I just have to add them up. So B is sine X cosine Y plus cosine X sine Y. So sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Okay, and then uh, if we look in the triangle and focus on the angle x plus y, the sine of x plus y in this triangle is opposite over hypotenuse. The side opposite is b, so it's b over the hypotenuse is one. So b over one, and then cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is a, and hypotenuse is one, so A over one. And we're pretty much done. I'm just gonna copy uh, the stuff I wrote on the left-hand side over again and kind of like make it a little clearer. So we figured out A is cosine X cosine Y minus sine X sine Y. B is sine X cosine Y plus cosine X sine Y. We know that cosine of X plus Y is A over one. Sine of X plus Y is B over one. So really cosine of X plus Y is just A and sine of X plus Y is just B which means we have this formula for cosine of x plus y 
It's the cosine of x, cosine of y minus the sine of x, sine of y. And then we have this formula for sine of x plus y, sine x cosine y plus cosine x sine y. So those are the sum formulas because you're adding the two angles together, but there's other formulas that you can get. Um, there's a difference formula where it would be like the cosine of x minus y. Uh, there's double angle formulas where it'd be like the cosine of 2x or the sine of 2x. The way you can get those, just make some clever substitutions here. So if I let x equal a and I let y equal negative b, then I'll get cosine of a minus b is cosine a, cosine b, well, cosine negative b minus sine a, sine of negative b. And then I have to do stuff with even and odd properties, double angle formulas. We can just let x equal a and also let y equal a. And then we get cosine of 2a, sine of 2a. And then to figure out like the formulas, the way they finally end up looking, you're gonna end up using the even and odd properties. Um, but that's it. That's how we can like geometrically from this particularly uh, constructed rectangle, figure out the cosine of x plus y, sine of x plus y. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.